In the world of do-it-yourself electronics, home automation is a very popular topic. People seem to want to make their lives easier, and automating menial tasks around the house seems like a good place to start. In my ideal automated home, I want a machine that will cook me breakfast, but in lieu of a Doc Brown burnt toast machine, let's start with something simpler. The easiest place to get started is to use some simple logic to turn a device on and off, and most home appliances run off of AC power. If you take apart an outlet, you'll see two or more wires with different colors. These can differ by country, but in the US you might see a bare wire for ground, a white wire for neutral, and a black wire for hot. Oh, and before you disassemble an outlet, please turn off the breaker that supplies power to it. In North America, the hot wire will be 110 to 120 volts AC with respect to the neutral line. If we wanted to automatically switch the power, we would add a relay in line with the hot wire. We could then control the relay with digital logic to turn an appliance on and off. We could put together a project inside of a wall and keep it very neat looking, However, that would require splicing your home's wiring and taking other precautions like making sure your enclosure is properly grounded. To make life easier for us, there is a product that already handles the hard part of adding a relay to AC power. This is the Power Switch Tail 2. You can get one for $20 to $30 on SparkFun, Adafruit, or Amazon. It acts as a very short extension cord with an enclosed relay that can be controlled by 3 to 12 volt digital logic. Because it comes enclosed, we don't have to worry about building our own enclosure and making sure it is properly grounded if it was metal. The downside is that it's built for 120 volts AC with NEMA 5 connectors, meaning that this will really only work in North America and a handful of other countries. Power Switch Tail, the same people who make this product, also make kits for 240 volts AC where you can solder in your own extension cable to make it work with other socket types. The Power Switch Tail 2 is rated to handle up to 15 amps which is enough for a few lamps, a desktop computer, or a home entertainment system, assuming you don't have a massive sound system. The relay in this model is normally open, which means that we need to provide current through the inputs to see AC voltage appear on the receptacle side. To do that, we'll connect plus in to a digital I.O. pin on our microcontroller and minus in to ground on the microcontroller. The pin labeled as ground is connected to the ground wire in the AC circuit, and can be used to tie the ground in your project or your enclosure to true earth ground. This can be used as an extra safety precaution if you desire. Microcontrollers offer a great way to control digital electronics through programming. In that way, they kind of work as tiny computers. We'll be using the particle photon as it comes with a built-in Wi-Fi radio, and you can get a version with pre-soldered pins. Let's build the hardware first. Insert the photon into the breadboard. Using jumper wires, Connect D6 to plus in of the power switch tail. Use a flathead screwdriver to tighten the screw terminal until the wire won't move. Then, connect ground of the photon to minus in. Again, use a screwdriver to tighten the terminal. And that's it. Plug in a micro USB cable to the photon and the other end into a power source, such as your computer or a wall adapter. Your photon should be blinking blue, which means it needs to be configured to connect to the internet. Download the Particle app for iPhone or Android and open it. If asked, sign in, or if you don't have a Particle account, you'll want to create a new one. Make sure your phone is connected to the Wi-Fi network that you ultimately want the Photon to connect to. Press the plus button and select Set up a Photon. Press Ready, assuming your Photon is on and flashing blue. You should see only one Photon listed, assuming it's yours that's waiting for Wi-Fi configuration in the immediate vicinity. Press it and wait for it to connect. If you're asked about changing ownership, go ahead and press Change Owner. Select your network, enter your Wi-Fi's password, and press Connect. Wait while your Photon connects to Particle's servers. Once it's done, you should see a Setup Complete screen. Press Done. You can check to see if the Photon is connected to the Particle servers, as the LED will be slowly pulsing light blue. If your Photon requires a firmware update, it will blink purple as it automatically downloads and installs it from Particle servers. Just wait until it begins pulsing light blue again. One cool feature about the Photon is that we can write a program in a web editor and send it to the Photon over the internet. No need to plug it into your computer. Open a browser and head to build.particle.io and sign in using your Particle credentials. Click the code icon and select Create New App. Give it a name like Big Blink. In the code section, write int pst equals d6 semicolon. This says that we'll use pin 6 to control the power switch tail. 
And then on a new line, write void setup open parentheses, close parentheses, open curly brace. If you've ever used an Arduino, this should look familiar. Setup is called once right after the photon boots. Then on a new line, write slash slash IO as output. And then pin mode PST comma output. The first line is a comment, which the compiler ignores. The second one says that we'll use pin D6 as an output. If we write hi to it, 3.3 volts will appear on pin D6. And if we write low, the pin will become zero volts. Close the function with another curly brace, and then write void loop, open parentheses, close parentheses, open curly brace. Just like an Arduino, everything in the loop function will run over and over and over again. Then write slash slash, turn power switch tail on for one second, on a new line, digital write, PST comma high, followed by delay 1000. This sets pin D6 to high, or 3.3 volts, and then does nothing for 1000 milliseconds. Finally, we'll write slash slash turn off the power switch tail for one second, digital write PST comma low, followed by delay 1000. This sets pin D6 to low, or zero volts, and then does nothing for another 1000 milliseconds. Close out the loop function with a curly brace, and we're done. Click the save button, and then click flash. While the code is being uploaded, you should see the LED change colors and flash a lot. Once it's done uploading, the LED will begin slowly pulsing light blue again. At this point, the program will start running. You should see the red LED on the power switch tail begin blinking on for one second and then off for one second. While this is a good check to make sure our program is working, the real test happens when we plug it into the wall. Find some 120 volt AC appliance and unplug it, but make sure it is switched on. I'll demonstrate this with a lamp. Plug the power switch tail into the wall and plug the appliance into the power switch tail. Use a wall adapter to give power to the photon. Once the photon powers up and connects, it should begin flashing the appliance on and off. I'm not really sure how this is useful, other than maybe throwing a light switch rave. However, there are other appliances we could connect, like fans. To extend this project, we could use a temperature sensor to make a simple feedback loop that turns the fan on when it gets a little too hot in a room. As you can see, being able to control a home appliance is a fantastic starting point for home automation and is an important building block for projects to come. While we just switched a lamp on and off, we didn't even begin to explore the possibilities associated with having it connected to the internet. On the next episode, we'll be able to control this appliance from anywhere in the world using the powerful if this then that or if protocol. In the meantime, Think about other fun and useful electronics you'd like to see controlled using this setup. Leave a comment below if you think of something cool. Also, Hackster has some really great projects on home automation, so if you're looking for some inspiration, click on this link to check them out.